Well, hello and welcome back to another Reality Check Tech Review. Today we're unboxing the HE3D i3 triple extruder 3D printer. That's right. This is a, a really cool 3D printer in that it actually allows you to take three different filament colors or even different types of filament and to extrude them into one single nozzle extruder. Uh, so this is the first printer that I personally have used that actually has this ability to do that kind of a thing So that's really really cool. Anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and do the unboxing of that which you're gonna go ahead and check out right now Okay, here we have the fully assembled triple extruder HE3D printer. Uh, I, I, it took all night putting it together and I haven't slept yet so I really need to go get some sleep. Uh, I was just really excited to get this thing put together and I didn't want to wait until the next day. Uh, I, I still don't know exactly how to run it and there are apparently no test examples on the print uh, or on the, on the SD card so I'm going to have to go on the computer and kind of look in uh, to some more details on exactly how to get a test print going with this thing. I do have red, blue, and yellow colors here waiting. I've also got some white sitting down there. I want to use some of that, but uh, really simple. You just have to put each of the colors into each of the extruders right here. Each of them then feeds over here into the main nozzle, and it just has one nozzle uh, on the bottom there, and it's a .4 nozzle. So it looks like uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in, and at some point, 
here, I'm, I'm gonna also put, some, put it back. I also need to put some tape down because there is no board that came with it. Uh, it doesn't have any kind of a glass or anything there, unfortunately. So uh, I'm gonna have to do that. But uh, still, we've got everything working. I already turned it on to test it, and it does work really, really well right now. Uh, other than the fact that I haven't tested any prints with it, so we need to actually test a 3D print with it until uh, I get some sleep. Uh, I'll, I'll check it out next time. So. We'll update it here very soon. Okay, now, so as you can see, th there's lots of parts for this printer, and, and it didn't come with the most precise instructions, but even so, I was able to put it together with what I had. Now, when you're putting a printer like this together, sometimes you'll notice that it does not have every single piece, and, and sometimes the pieces can be missing. I actually thought that I was missing a few, but I noticed by the end of it, I actually had more pieces than I actually was missing. So, uh, you have to just kind of go through every single thing and lay out your pieces one by one. Uh, there was, like I said, one extra bag of hardware in this printer, so from that I was able to get all the other pieces that I needed. And even if there are a couple bolts that um, kind of lose their, you know, like their thread, it comes out a little bit, I was able to fix that, like I said, with the extra ones that came uh, in the other bag. So, um, while I was putting the printer together, there was a few issues that I had. There's one ceramic piece that I ended up breaking when I tried to pull the whole printer off. Uh, I want to try to just pick it up, and that's because I hadn't secured both of the top brackets before I tried to move it. So, uh, you know, other than that, putting it together was pretty smooth. I got to do it in one sit down, uh, which took me basically an entire uh, evening. I, I, I sat through the entire night building the printer and, and it was pretty cool because uh, by the time I was done with it, it, it looked pretty good. It was working. It turned on the very first time I tried to turn it on. It was ready to go. So there was no issues with that. Big problem was when I finally finished putting the printer together. Yeah, yeah, big whoop, you got a printer together, but because this one's different, because you can print with different colors, and you've got three different extruders as opposed to just the single one, uh, you have to set things up a little differently than you do with a normal printer. So, when I finally got ready to actually print a file, uh, I had no idea what to do. So, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick overview of what to do to get started on your 3D printer. Um, at least to do multiple colors, whether you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight extruders, you can uh, use the same method and it's going to work for you. So let's go ahead and take a look on the computer right here and see what it is that you have to do. So, okay, so you can see the very first thing I tried to print here was this uh, crazy looking awful colored castle and it is uh, just a simple little piece here. It's all grouped up together. Right now I can ungroup the models and the pieces can be taken apart. Uh, they're all individual pieces. Uh, okay, anyways. Okay, so starting from scratch, I just downloaded 3.6 Cura and you can use Cura or Simplify 3D, whichever one works best for you. And you want to go into the settings and add your printer. So I'm going to add a custom FFF printer right here. You've got uh, your choices of custom, others. Uh, if, it's, if you have a printer that's listed, go ahead and take your printer that's listed. I'm going to put test printer multicolor. And then once we got that test printer multicolor going, it's going to ask us here for the size of it and how many extruders right there. So we can actually put the size of it in here, we can put 200 by 280 by, oop, not by 500, by 200, which is the size of my printer. And then I can go over here to number extruders and I can put three. It supports up to eight at this time. And then once you put the number of extru extruders on there, you can see right there, extruder one, two, three. And from here I can click on extruder one. Uh, the diameter of the material that I'm using is 1.75. And depending on what yours is, you can change that. If you have different fans, uh, some extruders actually have different extruders uh, underneath so you have a, a like for example you have an extruder and a nozzle and if you have a nozzle and a fan on each one you're going to want to set those on here uh, for my printer I have one nozzle for all three extruders so I'm not going to change any of the settings for the offset because there is no offset there's no cooling fan and there's no offset for each of these they're all the same so I just want to make sure they all have the same nozzle size and I want to make sure they all have the same material and then once I have that they're all ready to go so I'm going to hit finish and now I have three extruders. Okay, so how can we actually make this print uh, possible? Okay, so here we have four different models on the screen and I've imported them all separately. And with this, we can actually assign each of these to their own material. And from that point, we can actually start to see what it's supposed to look like. So let's go ahead and do that real quickly. I can go up here to the material for each extruder. As you can see, each extruder, one, two, three, they're all listed up above. Okay, so here we have the models in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the extruders 
and I can actually change the materials for each one. But if I go into Manage Materials, you'll see that I've already created several of these different PLAs that are custom. What's nice is that you can go into Print Settings and you can tell the print settings, you know, what's your retraction speed for this material? What's the standby temperature for this material? So, you know, anytime there's an extruder that's printing this material, it has these specific settings ready to go for it. So you can just completely make those exactly what it needs to be. And then once you're done with that, you just have to sit there and actually highlight them. So custom, PLA, this one's black, perfect. So the next extruder, I'm going to go into the material, and that one's already set to red, but you know, this is how you would do it. And then vice, uh, you know, also just over here to, to three. Uh, this one's blue. Let's go ahead and change it from blue. I'll go ahead and go into custom and we'll say we want uh, green. We want a green. Okay, so great. Now it's got green PLA and what I can do here is I can actually, you know, go over to these different pieces now. And so these are the different models, right? So this model is the ground and I can want, I can take the model and I can say, hey, no, you need to be printed with the extruder 3. All right, so that makes it green instantly because extruder 3 is green. And now uh, this is the actual castle itself and I want the castle to be red. So I wanted to say, hey, you need to be red. And boom, now the castle's instantly red. So that's pretty cool. And the doors are both black, which is fine. I want them to be printed with extruder one. That's just what I wanted. So now what I have to do is I have to click on each. I have to highlight each of these, right? And I right click it and I'm gonna click on merge models. And when I click merge models, it's gonna automatically smush those guys together exactly where they should be. And you're gonna now see that I've got all the colors uh, perfectly lined up in the models where they were in the program uh, the way they they started so that's the way it's going to print perfectly with each of those colors just the way that you see them right there and then what I can do is I can go over here into my settings and I'm gonna want to scroll down until I see this part that says dual extrusion enable prime tower and this prime tower is going to allow it to, to change the colors without having mess ups in between the colors, right? Uh, because it's got to extrude one and put the other one in. So there's going to be a little bit of time where it has a little bit of a mixture of off color in between those changes. So this prime tower is going to allow you to, to get rid of that so that you don't have any bad looking problems with your print. So, and this position is going to tell you where it's at. This little shadow over here is that. So I, you can see if I put like 160, it kind of you know, moves over a little bit. If I put 200, uh, it'll move down closer. So you can, you know, move it a little bit closer to you. And that way uh, it, it is going to take less time to go away and come back and go away and come back. But you don't want to have it too close to where it interferes with your print, especially uh, if you're going to be doing multiple items. So anyway that is pretty much all you have to have set right there and once it slices you're ready to go you're you're ready to rock that's that's pretty much it so um yeah i hope you guys uh, learned something from this i'm going to go ahead and keep working with it myself i have to do a lot i i, I need to figure out the exact settings because i don't know them um, i'm actually still looking for more information myself what i found was it's very hard to get good information on the subject of coloring with multiple extruders as well as with this specific printer. So I'm going to keep researching and I'll probably make some update videos. This is just the first of a few to come. I just wanted to at least share the build, the assembly, and uh, of course a quick how to get your 3D printed object out there. And, 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 and one more time, just in case you guys didn't, didn't get it entirely, we'll, 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 we'll run through.
Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys found uh, some information useful, and uh, I will definitely be making a few more update videos on this subject, as well as several other 3D printer slash technology videos here in the future. So I appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.